Hey everyone, it's Matt from The Pen Habit. I'm glad to have you back for another video. The pen in today's review is a pen from a company that I've never reviewed before. This is a pen from the company, I'm gonna spell it first and then I'm gonna tell you why I pronounce it the way I do. It's T-A-C-C-I-A. -C -C -I I'm going with an Italian pronunciation, so Tatcha um, is, is the pronunciation that I have heard and that I'm going to go ahead and use. Um, I've heard other people call it by uh, other pronunciations, but that's what I'm going for. Uh, Tatya is an American-based company, um, although the man where the pens themselves are manufactured is kind of unclear. Uh, and uh, it's a, a company that I don't know a whole lot about. Um, they are distributed by Itoya of Japan, um, but the company, from what I understand, is based here in the United States. It's a very interesting pen, and uh, one I'm surprised I like as much as I do. Uh, before I get to the review, though, I do want to say a quick thank you to our sponsor, Pen Chalet. Pen Chalet has been a sponsor of the Pen Habit for quite a while uh, for providing this pen free of charge for review purposes. So thank you to Ron at Pen Chalet for that. Um, and don't forget, if you are looking for a pen, head over to Pen Chalet. They accept the coupon code PENHABIT, all one word, for a 10% discount off your order there. So that's at penchalet.com. So thank you again for this pen for review purposes. All right. Well, let's talk a little bit about the Tatcha Covenant. Now, generally speaking, I am a fan of unique designs. Um, you know, I, I really like things like the Omas Ogiva Alba, or excuse me, the Omas Ogiva Celluloid, which while the, it's the material that's unusual, or the Visconti Divina, which is that five-sided twirling pen. Um, I, I like pens that have something unique about them. Uh, this is a pen that is, I can honestly say, I don't really think I've seen this design quite the same way. Um, because the entire cap, the cap covers almost the entire pen. So here's the pen. Here's the cap. Now, you see similar things like this in, say, um, Caveco, uh, all sport, you know, the Caveco lines of pens, the sport pens, which are short little pens where the cap covers most of the body. But this is a full-sized pen. Um, a lot of those smaller pens, you need to post the cap in order to use comfortably. Not so with this. So let me go through the design of the pen to start off with. Um, as I mentioned, the cap is this, it's cylindrical and covers the pretty much the whole length of the pen. It's got this rounded top and then a big chunky metal band with a couple of uh, little score lines in it. It says Tatcha right here. And uh, clip here, it's very springy, but you know, there's not a lot of, it's not a super strong clip, but still very springy. Has kind of a little diamond at the end of here for the, for the ball. I like this design uh, because I feel like it has um, a vintage quality about it, but still unique and kind of modern. Um, so it doesn't feel like it's going off the deep end from a design perspective, but it has a kind of a vintagey feel to it, almost like uh, something from either the Art Deco era or a little bit later, like the 40s and 50s. Uh, a nice design. I like it quite a bit. Then you see at the bottom of the cap, there's just a little nubbin on the end here, uh, which is the barrel of the pen. There's some threads on the end of the barrel for posting the cap, and we'll get to that in a second. If you unscrew the cap, it's let, let's do the, uh, the count here. So it is about two and a half turns to get the cap off. And you come to this full length pen here. Now, this pen is, without the cap, it's, it's kind of a, a ho-hum design. You know, the design itself isn't anything particularly spectacular. You've got a gold washer here between the section and the threads. Uh, nice cylindrical barrel and another little gold ring here. And then the threads on the back. One of the things I like a lot about the section is that the section is very large. So it's quite comfortable for me to hold. I can hold it up here and get a slightly wider grip. I can hold it down here and get a really narrow grip. So they really just seem to design the section in mind for a whole variety of people with different grip sizes and grip positions. Really uh, nice 
slightly convex section, you know, really, or kind of tapered section, rather, and then another gold ring right down here at the bottom. It's a cartridge converter filler, but the base of the section is a metal thread, so you're probably not going to want to try to use this as an eyedropper. Um, standard international cartridges or converters, and because it's long enough, it can actually take both, both long and short cartridges. And then you'll notice there's a little brass ring on the inside of the pen uh, to keep the, the metal from having to mesh with acrylic. The pen is made out of black acrylic. Now, this pen also comes in a couple of other colors, a dark blue swirly material that they call um, Midnight Breeze, and a really fascinating um, kind of brownish white material called Parchment Swirl. Um, I think Parchment Swirl is probably my favorite material of this pen. Uh, if you get a chance, I'll try to cut in a photo here, but uh, if you, if I can't find a good enough one to cut in, head over to Pen Chalet and take a look, because it is a cool looking material. And because you've got this whole uh, barrel exposed, you can see the material really, really well, which I think is kind of cool. Um, the nib is a stainless steel nib. It is, from what I understand, a Yovo nib. So I, what I've found online, this, it is, this isn't from their website, but for what I found on Fountain Pen Network and a couple of other places, uh, Tatcha does use Yovo nibs. So this is a bicolor nib, uh, steel nib, and it has the little Tatcha logo on it with the kind of scroll work here. Um, when I got the pen, the, the nib and the feed were not quite aligned, so I just had to, um, it wasn't quite seated right, so I just rotated around and seated it and, um, and haven't had really many problems with it since, but we'll get more to that in the writing. Uh, as I mentioned, the pen does post, I can show you this here, and you can screw it on for posting, uh, screw the cap on for posting, but... I mean, this is just so big. Uh, I have never felt the need to post this pen. Um, and one of the other problems, and I can show you this here, is when you post the pen, if you hold on to the section and start unscrewing, you're actually going to unscrew the barrel from the section, which is not what you're going for. So you have to make sure that you grab it right here on the little flange to unscrew it. Uh, threads are very smooth and uh, mesh quite well, although they are just a touch, got just a little bit of slack to them, but not too much. Uh, overall, a really fascinating pen, really interesting design, unique cap. This is a, a great way to have kind of an understated pen and still have something that's very, very, very different from the norm, which is kind of cool when you think about it. All right, let's go ahead and do a few comparables, and I'll give you the measurements, and then I'm going to show you how this thing writes. Okay, so here we have the Tatcha Covenant. And then if we look at some of the bigger flagshipy type pens, uh, you've got a Mont Blanc 149, so you can see it's not that much smaller than the Mont Blanc. Uh, here is the Pelican M1000, the Pelican M800, and the... Oh, let me don't have the vacuum sealer sealed closed, the Visconti uh, Homo Sapiens Bronze Age. And I just remembered I haven't cleaned this since I wrote it dry, so I'm going to set it aside so I can remember to actually clean this pen. <laughs> Gotta love it. All right, and if you look at some of the uh, less expensive pens that are well known on the market, here is the Metropolitan from Pilot, the Lamy All-Star. So very similar, I'm gonna slide this down just a bit. Very similar in length, a little bit longer than the All-Star. And here is the Twisby Eco slash Echo. Um, I'm calling it the Eco. So, uh, there are some comparables for you. And in terms of measurements, you're looking at capped 143 millimeters. So it's pretty long capped. Uncapped, you are going to be looking at 140.3 millimeters, so still quite long, uncapped. Uh, the posted pen, and like I said, it can be posted, comes to a monstrous 183.1. And then when you look at diameters, you've got 10.8 millimeters in the middle of the section, 
you've got 12.6 in the middle of the barrel and 15.6 in the middle of the cap. And then weight-wise, you've got 16 grams for just the pen and another 16 grams for just the cap for a total of 32 grams if you were to post this pen. So that is the Tatcha Covenant. Let's go ahead and do a little bit of writing and show you how this thing performs. This is the Tatya Covenant. And this is the, what they call it, the jet black version. We have a steel nib in medium. And this is a this is pretty close to a medium medium. Um, it's not a, it's a little tiny bit on the fine side, but not too much. The ink is Mont Blanc Honoré de Balzac. Honoré de Balzac. Dandy turquoise. And the paper is a Rhodia dot pad. And we got a little bit of a hard start there. I'll talk about that in just a moment. Here's your quote. Okay, so you may have noticed that there is a little bit of a uh, little bit of a tendency to hard start or skip just a bit. It's not terrible, and it's only uh, it tends to happen if I roll my pen a little bit or if I hold it at a weird angle. This does have a little bit of a sweet spot. Now, I haven't adjusted the ink flow on this pen or the the polish on the nib. I'm going to though. Um, because I can tell this nib is real close to being fantastic, but it's not quite there yet for me. So just be aware that if this is a pen you buy, uh, that you you may need to do a little bit of work on it. Now, what I've seen online from a lot, a lot of people is that um, their Tatcha pens are some of the best value for the money, super smooth writers, uh, and really, really nice pens. This nib is not quite there, but it's close and it needs a little bit of work. So, um, in terms of the polish on the nib, it's, I'd, so I'm going to kind of implement a new scale methodology where I'm going to talk about nib polish as being, one is being, it slips off the page, super, super smooth, no friction at all to 10, which is going to be kind of like uh, if you can imagine writing on sandpaper. Uh, this is going to be kind of about a six. So it's got that feel a lot. It feels a lot like writing with a pencil, actually, um, a pencil with a fairly hard lead. Uh, so it's, it, it, for me, it's a little too much friction with the paper, but I know a lot of people really like that feel. I tend to like my nibs a little bit smoother and a touch more wet. So you can see from a wetness perspective here, um, it's not terrible by any stretch of the imagination. Oh, so you got a little bit of a hard start there because I was holding it at too high of an angle. Um, 
So it's it's a little bit on the dry side for me. It is a very rigid nib. Um, you're not going to get a lot of line variation out of it. As a steel nib, I wouldn't suggest you try pushing a lot of variation out of it. Um, reverse rider. A little on the scratchy side, but it works well enough, I suppose. Um, I do find that with this pen, you know, as I mentioned, if you roll the pen or if you get it at too high of an angle, uh, it gets a little bit on the scratchy side. Um, I also tend to see a bit more of the hard starting. You know, it's got an almost stubby quality to it. In that case, I was too low. Now I was, <laughs> it's like, it, it does have a sweet spot that I haven't quite learned yet. Um, but you can see it does have almost a stub-like quality to the nib where the cross strokes are a little bit narrower than the down strokes. Um, but yeah, I think a trip over some micro mesh with this will take care of the issues I'm seeing without really any difficulty. Um, and just based on what I've seen from other people online, because I don't know much about this brand, I'm going to guess that the I've, I've got a little bit of a, a nib issue with this particular one. I do know that uh, Pen Chalet is, is great with customer support. So if you decide this is a pen you want and you're worried about nib support, don't be because they will take care of you. Um, they, they always do. <laughs> That's been my experience anyway. And um, this is a, a standard number five size nib. So, I mean, in theory, you could replace it, but I'm not entirely sure why you would because it is actually, once you get it going, it's a pretty darn good writer. So that is my review of the Tatcha Covenant. It's a really fascinating pen with a really fascinating design. Um, I like the design a lot. I, you know, like I said, I think I like the, the swirly materials just a little bit more. But I like the design. I've actually had non-pen people ask me about it because it, it's understated, but it still draws attention when they see this mammoth cap sitting on your desk. Uh, the ink flow, I, I wrote out the hand review, handwritten review with this. I didn't have any problem with ink flow or ink starvation. The nib was a little more feedbacky than, uh, than I particularly care for, but that's very, very easily remedied with a bit of micro mesh. And overall, I've been really impressed with my first Tatcha pen. So that should do it for this review of the Tatcha Covenant. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them on penhabit.com or on the YouTube channel. And you can also find me on all of my social media haunts. The full list is down in the show notes or the description on YouTube below. And uh, once again, huge thank you to Pen Chalet for sending this for review purposes. I really do appreciate it. And once I get the nib writing nicely, I'm... Uh, I'm sure this will be one I will enjoy quite a bit because it's very comfortable in the hand. So thanks for watching and we will see you here next time on The Pen Habit.